Hello info person, this is Anton, and this right here is a galaxy known as Messier 49, the brightest galaxy in the Virgo cluster, the largest galactic cluster next to us, located around 55 million light years away from us. And it contains a lot of galaxies on the inside, thousands of them as you can see from this image. Many of them are very similar to the Milky Way, but a lot of them are also extremely different. They are kind of similar to Massey 49. And the most famous galaxy here is the one we've discussed many times on the channel. It's the galaxy known as Massey 87, or M87 for short. The galaxy that's also became famous for the iconic image of its black hole right in the middle, the M87 black hole that we've discussed on the channel many times. With the galaxy and the black hole located right in the middle of this particular cluster, that we're discussing because of a recent study that was able to analyze it using some of the new techniques. And also producing some of the images that we've never really seen before. This is what this cluster looks like with a new survey known as VERTICO, which stands for Virgo Environment Traced in Carbon Monoxide. The new survey that revealed the galaxy in radio light mixed with X-rays and that essentially tried to answer a relatively simple but somewhat difficult to answer question. What's killing all of the galaxies in a lot of different galactic clusters, including the Virgo cluster? Which is essentially one of the questions we're going to try to answer today, while also exploring the Virgo cluster itself. And all of this, as always, you can find in the description below, including the survey that focused on carbon monoxide and tried to reveal the activity of various galaxies and various galactic interactions, essentially answer the question of what's really killing these galaxies. But I guess to start, what do we mean by killing the galaxies? What does life have anything to do with this? Well, generally speaking, when it comes to galaxies, when we say a living galaxy, it means the galaxy that's still producing stars. Or essentially a galaxy that uses a lot of cold hydrogen gas to sort of clump into bigger chunks and to then have stars somewhere in the vicinity. With some galaxies being really, really good at this, producing hundreds and hundreds masses of the sun per year, and some other galaxies being almost completely quiet for one reason or another. Now, sometimes it's because of an extremely powerful black hole in the middle that tends to produce very powerful winds, but in other cases, the reasons are not entirely understood. And some of these observations from various galactic clusters do suggest that many galaxies inside these very massive clusters tend to eventually stop producing stars. In other words, they kind of become dead. But what exactly kills them is the question the scientists have been trying to answer for a pretty long time. And the thing is, in the past when the scientists were looking at various galactic clusters, especially the really, really famous ones with a lot of mass on the inside, this one here you can see produces a lot of different gravitational landing effects, they've realized that many of these clusters contain a lot of these really old and very red galaxies that generally just have a lot of ancient stars, but absolutely no star production on the inside. As a matter of fact, most of these so-called dead galaxies seem to be inside large clusters. They're very unlikely to be alone by themselves, and many galaxies that tend to still produce stars, like for example the Milky Way galaxy, will usually not really be in the middle of a large cluster. It will be in some sort of a small neighborhood, like the one we refer to as the local group. Here's by the way what the local group sort of looks like with the center right there being the Milky Way, with a few neighbors that we have, smaller dwarf galaxies. But as you can see, generally speaking, it's actually a relatively empty neighborhood. We have the Andromeda Galaxy and the Triangulum Galaxy, and a few dwarf galaxies here and there. But compared to a lot of other neighborhoods, this is actually relatively empty. But Virgo Cluster, located around 55 million light years away from us, is an extremely interesting opportunity for us to study all of this. First of all, it's obviously the nearest massive cluster. It's actually so massive that it produces gravitational pulling effect on the entire local group, reducing the overall velocity of all of the galaxies here by roughly around 10%. This is referred to as the Virgo-centric flow. But more importantly, apart from the distance and from the mass, and also unlike other clusters that scientists have studied for many, many years, the Virgo cluster seems to be really unusual in that it's a mixture of different types of galaxies. And you can sort of see this in this image taken by the Hubble telescope a long time ago. It's a mixture of different spiral galaxies, such as the Milky Way galaxy, which is already unusual because a lot of clusters normally tend to disrupt their structure, 
but also a lot of these elliptical galaxies with extremely ancient stars and barely any star production, if any at all. And once again, there are nearly 2000 different galaxies here, at least the ones we can see. There are probably a lot of invisible dwarf galaxies on top of that. We only have three galaxies in the local group. And it's also generally believed to contain three different subgroups, with each of these subgroups slowly joining, which will eventually turn this into one large cluster. And a lot of these signs suggest that this is a relatively young cluster. It's a cluster that's still forming, and it's a cluster that basically hasn't really killed all of its galaxies just yet. Which means that it's a perfect opportunity to try to understand what's going on here. But interestingly, this cluster is so massive that some of the galaxies here move at ridiculously fast speeds, nearly 1600 kilometers per second, or about 1000 miles per second. And so some galaxies zoom past each other really, really, really fast. But in order to understand what happens to these galaxies long term and what stops their star production, we also have to look at what happens between the galaxies and try to analyze a lot of the activity in the intergalactic space. Or in this case, it would be referred to as the ICM, Intercluster Medium. And today the scientists believe that ICM is basically just a lot of super, super hot gas. It's essentially plasma, with temperatures reaching 30 million Kelvin. That's way hotter than the surface of the sun. And basically because of this, this produces a lot of X-rays. X-rays that can be visible from very far away distances. That's also sort of visible in this image as these tiny blue spots all over the place, including a relatively large one right here, that's the M87 galaxy. But surprisingly, or I guess maybe not surprisingly, the ICM, or the intracluster medium, also contains a lot of other stuff. I guess in some sense you would call it leftovers from various galaxies. As a matter of fact, up to about 10% of all of the stars from all of the galaxies in the cluster are in the ICM. They're outside of galaxies. They were most likely kicked out for one reason or another when various galaxies were colliding. ICM also contains relatively large clusters of stars, including global clusters, and there's even at least one detectable region that produces its own stars outside of the galaxy. Basically, there is a very large hydrogen cloud with a relatively massive star production, but outside of major galaxies. This was originally discovered approximately 20 years ago. And so this recent study that conducted the largest high-resolution survey of the galaxies investigating various star-forming regions in these galaxies decided to specifically focus on 51 galaxies inside the cluster in order to reveal the extreme environments that they currently have on the inside, essentially discovering the phenomenon that we refer to as the galaxy quenching. And galaxy quenching or galactic quenching can occur for various reasons. It can be because of extremely powerful winds from the black hole in the middle. It can also be because the galaxy just runs out of gas completely because all of the stars have already been created. But in this case, it really seems to occur because of the extreme effects inside the cluster. Extreme speeds, extremely high temperatures and gas, and just huge amounts of this super, super hot plasma with millions of degrees in temperature that interacts with various galaxies in such a way that it basically strips those galaxies of any cold gas on the inside. Or in other words, as a lot of these galaxies move around with speeds of thousands of kilometers per second, they end up hitting the super hot gas at very high velocities, which then strips them of any cold gas, cold hydrogen gas, and prevents them from forming stars in the future. And this is a really interesting phenomenon referred to as the gas stripping. The gas is literally stripped from the galaxies. All of which happens simply because the galaxies are moving way too fast, the gas is way, way too hot, and the collisions become extremely energetic. And eventually, all of these galaxies are most likely going to end up just like M87, M49, and a lot of other elliptical galaxies, filled with ancient stars and absolutely no star production whatsoever. But that's in the next few billions of years. For now, they still have stars, they still have production of stars, and they're still doing fine. Maybe some of those galaxies might even get completely kicked out of the system and might survive even longer. Although unfortunately, all of this is basically billions and billions of years in the future, so chances are we're not really going to know what's going to happen to them, ever. Nevertheless, it's a pretty exciting study and gave me a really good opportunity to talk about this incredible cluster. 
And by the way, in case you were wondering where exactly it's located compared to sort of the Andromeda Galaxy, compared to the Milky Way, well, this map right here can sort of help you visualize some of this. If this is the local group, and specifically right here, this is where the Milky Way Galaxy is, by going approximately 55 million light years toward this location, you're going to discover the Virgo Cluster. And this here is this large and extremely massive component that represents just a part of the supercluster that also happens to have the name Virgo. And altogether, all of these galaxies are actually moving in a certain direction, a direction that we sometimes refer to as the Great Attractor. But we'll talk more about this in some of the future videos, so make sure to subscribe. Anyway, on that note, well, pretty interesting discovery, a great opportunity to talk about the Virgo cluster, and more importantly, incredible new images that will allow scientists to study this cluster and discover some more hidden details somewhere within. But until then, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, thank you so much for watching, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.